Hello, hi. Uh, today we're going to talk about rotations using vectors. Uh, I want to talk especially about something called the rotation formula. And that solves the following problem. Let's say you have an axis. I give you an axis of rotation and a vector, a vector v or u, let's say u. And uh, this axis is defined by a vector, unitary vector. This defines the direction of, those, of this axis to which I want to rotate u by means of a left-hand rotation of an angle, let's say theta. So let's take u. So my problem is, I'll write it down. My problem is let's rotate u by an angle theta with respect to axis n, but rotate following a left-hand rotation. Meaning that I take my thumb, I put in the direction of n, and whatever my, uh, my hand follows, that's the direction of rotation that I'm going to give. So u by a, given delta, uh, by a given theta will give me, in the end, so this u will rotate over here by a number of angles, and I choose theta to be the angle that I want. So my, originally, this u can be seen as a sum of a vector that lies on the axis and a vector which is orthogonal to it. Okay? This vector that lies on the axis such that this one, to make this one orthogonal, I do a decomposition, right? So decompose, I will project u on, on n. So this is a, a projection. And just as a small uh, reveal, the way you project an angle, uh, a vector u on a direction n is given by the dot product. Okay, but the dot product gives you a number, which is the component, which is the real number that you should scale this vector to get it there, n. But you do need a direction. I wanted this to be a vector, so I will give the direction. So this vector has direction n and has norm given by the dot product. The dot product, again, the norm of the dot product of a times b is given by norm of a times norm of b times the cosine between them of this angle between them. Okay, this delta theta is not that delta that we are rotating. This is the angle between those two uh, vectors. And if one of those vectors has norm 1, let's say if this is a unitary vector, this is just 1. And what I have is a uh, times cosine of theta, which really is if you have a here and b over here and there, uh, the angle between them is theta. Well, if this is unitary, and then you have a times cosine of theta, what you really have is the projection as we wanted. So this is a small recall of what, why we are doing this. And therefore, our projection here can be written as u dot product n times n. OK? And then you have something else, which is w. W is the vector that you should add to all of this to obtain U. Therefore, you can read W as U minus that. OK, so this is W. So let's rotate U to find a vector over here, perhaps. This is U. We will rotate by theta. And we will obtain a vector V, which is here. So this is our v, which is the rotation of u. Okay? And we will try now to describe what this v is in terms of all those components that we now have. So v can be written, again, this on the axis, it didn't rotate. What I really have v now is the axis component plus this one over here, which is the rotated component of w. Okay? So we'll take w and rotate, meaning that this length here is equal to that length. And this vector remains the same. So I'll just copy it over there. We have u dot product n dot product n plus 
a uh, two components. Okay, so I will describe this new vector is still in these directions that we know. So first of all, there is the direction of u. So in the direction of u, and this is how we describe the direction of u, right, by a normalized vector. So in the direction of u, I have a component, which is this projection. I project this vector over u. And therefore, this projection can only be the norm of w times the cosine of theta. Right? So this is the norm of, uh, of uh, w. Let me just correct this a little bit, because u here, what I meant by u is really w. So this is w, and this is w. Right? I want in this direction, the direction of w, not the direction of u. So in the direction of w, I get uh, the norm of w times cosine theta. And I add another component, which is the component which is orthogonal. To get an orthogonal vector out of two directions, what we can do is use the, the cross product instead. So the dot product gives me this. The cross product, if I have one vector here, let's say uh, x and another vector here, y given by a game, uh, an angle alpha, let's say. If I do x, let's say those are, are two uh, any vectors, cross product i, what I obtain is a vector which is perpendicular to each one of them, okay? So, and follows the right, the, the direction follows the right hand rule. So actually this is minus x cross y, and the x cross y would be in this direction. And you would have also been orthogonal to both of them, okay? And the norm here, we also want a direction, so we must assure ourselves that this is norm 1. So the norm of this, it's really the norm of x times the norm of y times the sine of the angle between them, alpha. Okay, so if they are both unitary vectors, this is 1, this is 1. And the condition for me to have another unitary vector is that they are perpendicular. So I need to find two perpendicular directions here such that the cross product will be in the right direction that I want. And therefore, I find a unitary direction to which I will be able to decompose this component here. OK? So as a choice of direction, I can take notice that I want something that is perpendicular to n and w. So I need to do the, the product, but in the right order. So if you take n times w, so n will be like, like so, and w like that. And uh, the direction of the, com of the uh, and that resulting direction will really be opposite to what we want. So what we really want instead is to take W times N, and then we'll be right here. So we'll take W cross product N. Those need to be only directions, so I will take W as a direction. OK, so now is the cross product of directions that are orthogonal. And therefore, this defines uh, our orthogonal direction with a unitary point. But this unitary norm now, what we want, th now that I have the direction, I can tell what is the size. So we have this uh, orthogonal direction over here. And I want to decompose this vector that is remaining into that other comp direction, which can be done. Notice that this was w cosine theta. This will be w cosine, or a sine of theta. So this will be w sine of theta. And now, let's not end here. This would work, but uh, let's make it more compact. Let's make w get out of this equation, not make part of it anymore. So this would be u cross n, n. Now this w over here, it cancels out. And what we have is a w that looks like that, u minus u, n, n, cosine of theta, plus w again, u minus u, this is w, times n, and notice that the w over here, those two w will cancel out. Also, and you will have a sign. Now, this term here appears twice. So I'll put it over here. 
I'll put them together. Notice that there's one of this and minus cosine of the other. Plus whatever is missing, we have a u cosine theta plus this. Notice that the cross product of any vector with itself is 0. Therefore, this n cross n will be 0. And we will be left with only uh, u cross n sine of theta. This is my new v. And this is my rotation formula. So notice that w is no longer part of the equation. What we have here is basic a recipe. If you give me this problem, if you give me u, I place u over here by an angle theta with an axis n, and I'm able to find what is the left-hand rotation of that vector. And you might be asking yourself, why left-hand rotations? Why are we studying left-hand before of right? I just want to give you a heads up of uh, why we do that. It's because if we do have a plane, a reference frame, Coming from aerospace, you kind of think a reference plane is always a plane. Reference frame is always a plane. But uh, let's imagine this as a reference frame. And then I have a, a vector with respect to that. So often we don't rotate the vectors, we rotate the reference frames. So we will rotate that reference frame by a theta. Okay, and here you will have your new, your new plane, let's say something like this. This is the rotation of uh, a right-hand rotation. So now if we have a right-hand rotation of this plane by theta, notice that as far as the plane is concerned, I rotated, the plane rotated in this way, but the vector went further away by following a left-hand rotation. So that's why we study left-hand rotations of vectors, because they, they connect with the right-hand rotation of reference frames. If the reference frame rotate, the vector will rotate in the opposite direction. And that's why this is, it will become very useful for us. And uh, until next time, goodbye.